Hello, everybody. This is Amanda, and welcome to this new series of PolyWorks webinar. Today, we're talking about how to optimize components assembly using virtual gauges. Let's welcome Todd Anderson as he's our presenter today. Todd is a member of the technical support group. Let me remind you that if you have any questions during the webinar, please use the question panel. I will be monitoring the questions throughout the webinar. We will have a short Q&A session at the end of the webinar. If we don't have time to answer all the questions, we will get back to you by email. We're recording this webinar, so it will be available for later viewing. Todd, it's all yours. Great. Thanks, Amanda. As many of you know, when it comes time to assemble the parts and components of the product that you manufacture, it often requires many adjustments. This can be a very time-consuming task of adjusting each of the components and having to remeasure them. It can also be very costly as there may be a need for numerous mechanical shims or a very costly pre-manufactured set of gauges to be used in this process. Today's webinar, we're going to look at how we can use PolyWorks to aid in the assembly of the components by using the flush and gap gauges. These virtual gauges can be leveraged to do all the work for us by using the optimized flush and gap alignment. Let's look at an example. So we have an example of an access panel to the body. What we would like for the perfect assembly to be is to have the, the panel itself surface to be flush with the outside body. Also, we would like to have the gap or the perimeter around the panel to be even all the way around. This would be the perfect assembly. However, in our world, not everything is always perfect. We can see that in this particular instance, we have our panel and we actually have the body that has been scanned. We can see that, and there's this one position that the flush and gap of the panel to the body is not perfect. What we're going to do is actually use the flush and gap gauges to correct this and to optimize the location of this panel. Now, before we go through and do this, one of the things that we always want to make sure we have set would be what way we're going to consider a pre-alignment. We would want to have the part um, that we're looking for, in this case, the access panel, to be close. It could be a best fit data to reference, or it could be something as simple as point pairs. So in this case, what I've done is chose to use a point pair to the existing CAD model. And you can see that the panel itself is not exactly the same as the CAD. However, this is as close as it's going to get. So here's where we can go through and start to use the flush and gap gauges. Now, when we're going through and we're creating flush and gap gauges on a, a component like this, there, um, this is pretty much kind of like a multiple curvature surface or freeform shapes. An advantage that we would have to do this or to help us in creating the flush and gap gauges would be to use, say, the CAD model itself. So what I'm going to do is hide the main scan body and have the CAD model up. And in this case, for the method of creating, we're going to use along curves and we're going to actually set the, sub, um, the curve to be used off of the reference object. So by having the CAD model in here, we can find a curve or an edge that's all along the CAD model that will totally encompass the, or the surroundings of the panel and simply go through with a multiple set mode and a sampling step of 50, we can create flush and gap gauges that um, go around the entire perimeter of the object. When we've got them created, we can see that everything looks like it's going to work as far as the measurement zones go, and we can simply go through and create them. Now, when we're looking at this, we can see that we definitely have some issues of uh, a larger set of gaps, say, in the upper region through here as opposed to the lower regions. One of the things that we're going to go through and do is to actually check to see what we're going to set up for as far as what we're looking to have our deviations um, maximize or minimize those deviations, or in our case, what we're, we would use the term optimize. So with the flush and gap gauges created, let's go through and set up some tolerances for this. So for the flush gauge, I'm going to go ahead and use a one millimeter tolerance for that 
However, on the gap gauge, I want to actually increase this. Now, you'll see that when we're in this geometry controls for this particular tool, that there's um, upper and lower tolerances as well as warnings. I can go through and change all of them. However, if we use um, common tolerances or we m can use one that we're constantly having to type those numbers in, we could actually create a um, tolerance that is preset for us to go through um, as a template. So in this case, I'm going to have this set for 1.5. Everything fills in for me and I don't have to type it in. So now that we have the flush and gap gauges set and we have our tolerances, we can see that we're passing in some areas, but we're failing in others. This is where we're going to go through and actually have the software adjust all of this for us. Now, when we're doing this, we actually have two data sets inside of here. We have the access panel and the main body. So what we want to do is we only want the access panel to move. The main body will need to be locked off. So we'll go ahead and lock that off ahead of time. Now, for us to use the optimized flush and gap alignment, we have two ways that we can get to that. We could come up and go to align, optimize flush and gap gauges, or we can use one of my favorite right-click commands where we can pre-select all of the gauges in the tree, right-click, and you'll see align, optimize flush and gap. Now, how the optimize flush and gap um, command will work is this the panel will be moved around up and down rotated and what's going to happen is is this will be an iterative process it's going to go through and it's going to look at the deviation that we have and it's going to try to lower get um, it will run until the values that we set to be the max um, have been uh, uh, set so that they're lower than what we put in there. So what I mean by that is um, for this, I'm going to use the maximum deviation will be the tolerance that we had. So for the flush, we used one and for the gap, we used 1.5. So with these in place, we can simply hit start. And you can see that the maximum value for flush was set to one. Our current value is 0.166, and our maximum gap that was created within that is actually 1.472. If I close this and we look at the screen, you can see that the panel has now been adjusted so that it's even all the way around, and our measurements are actually passing as far as the deviation goes. So this is a pretty powerful tool where it can actually go through and adjust everything for us. Now, one of the other things that um, happens with this is as soon as the optimization is run and complete, a report is generated. So we actually have a table that will show us the min and max values for the gauges that are there, as well as the number of gauges that were used inside of that particular measurement. So when we start looking at the possibilities, you can discover that um, we can make the optimization help us figure out exactly how an actual physical alignment would be used or how we can facilitate that using this virtual analysis. You've probably heard us in previous webinars refer to this as point cloud engineering. It's something that we're doing more than just doing a simple measurement. We're actually taking those measurements and showing you how you can optimize and or get the best results out of that for, from that particular measurement for you. Let's look at a second example. So with this, we're going to we're going to use the exact same methodology that we used before. However, in this case, we have a car door and a body on here. Now we have the CAD model and the scans. And if I show the scans and we zoom in to see the areas that are near each other, the flush and gap, we definitely have a height issue as well as we may actually see that there, the gap is uneven as this goes around the entire body. Now, in this particular instance, instead of us using just the flush and gap and letting it run um, and giving us the best result, we actually have some restrictions to this. Uh, this is a door that is not something that's going to move um, around as it opens and shuts. This is actually set up on a set of hinges. Now, if we go through and we look at this, uh, I'll hide the body side and we'll turn our door on so we just see the door. 
On the inside of the door, we have a location for our hinges as to where they would be set and located inside of here. We can actually use these features to do an alignment since we know that this is where the door would connect. We can pre-align using, say, features that we would set up on those particular holes. So if I go through and create these features, I can create some center points from that. And then we can use uh, optimize, um, excuse me, we can use the best fit measurement objects where we're using the center points of that and we can pre-align this using that setup. Now, you'll notice that these holes where the hinge locations are, are not straight. They're at different angles to each other. What we're looking for is we're going to need to simulate where the axes of the hinge would be. Um, for this particular instance, what I've done is I've taken all the center points and I've created an average point from that to simulate the rotation around Z as to where the axis would be as far as the hinge goes. Now, when we look at this with the pre-align, we can actually see that the body actually does not match, excuse me, the body of the door doesn't match the scan. Um, if with this, even with this pre-aligned, we're still off as far as um, the flush and gap or where it's fitting itself to the door. However, it's still pretty close. So let's turn back on the scan of the body and the door itself. We're going to set the body side up so that it's locked just like we did the last time. Uh, we're going to actually come through and we can create the flush and gap uh, for this again. So if I come through and say start flush and gap, I could turn the CAD model back on and use a long curve. But one of the things that um, a lot of people don't realize is under methods, one of the rarely used methods is actually we can create the flush and gap gauges from a text file. So if we actually have another project where we've gone through and we've measured this door in one instance and we want to know the exact locations or have those gauges in the exact locations of the previous one, we could simply export those gauges out and then import them in in a, in a new project. We can either bring them in as ordered points or points and vectors. It's as simple as just coming through and finding the text file that we've exported this out and import these back in. As we go through and we preview this, we can see that we have our gauges all set. And we can go ahead and confirm. Now, here's one of the issues that tends to pop up a lot, and we get a lot of um, questions about this, especially with tech support. Uh, a lot of times, we'll get a tech support call where we get um, the call that comes in and says, one of my components didn't extract or the flush and gauge didn't complete. Nine times out of 10, when this happens, it's as simple as just going through and adjusting the measurement zone. So if we zoom into number four, we can actually see that five and three did compute. And if we keep zooming in, we can kind of come through and see, and you can roughly see that there's the outline for the door itself or the measured value, however, it's stopping a little bit short. And the simple way to fix this is just to right click and edit the measurement zone. Usually, most of the time, all you have to do is just drag it so it's a little bit larger than that area. You'll see that the gauge automatically computes and you're ready to go and continue from there. So now that we have our gauges set up, let's go through and uh, set our tolerances. So just like we did the last time, we'll go one, and in this time, we're gonna actually come through and we'll set it to 1.5, just like the last. And now what we can go through and do is our optimize flesh and gap alignment. So for this, I'm gonna simply right click, align, optimize flesh and gap. Now, unlike the last one, this one we're going to actually put some restrictions or constraints in here. Because we have a hinge on this particular door, we don't want it to move all the way around. In this instance, what we're looking for is we're going to have, um, we're only going to allow the adjustments to move in the X direction or fore and aft. And what we're going to allow the door to do is actually only rotate around Z. And you can see that that follows along with my coordinate system. Now, to do this, we'll just go ahead and start using constraints. We'll come in and say we want to rotate around Z. 
We only want to translate around X, so we'll turn Y off. Now, the question is, where do we want to rotate um, us, or use the center point for rotation? Well, we want to actually use the hinge that's in this location. We have created the average point over here for its rotation, for its location. Now, a lot of you may, remember, may not remember what the values are for this, or you would go through and try to type them in. Always remember that when we have open value boxes for X, Y, Z, or I, J, K, you can simply drag and drop one of the features into that window, and everything would fill in for you. So that's one of the tips that I always kind of want everybody always to remember. Try to let Polyworks do all the work for you and try not to, to struggle. And in this case, this is one of those quick and easy tips. So now we're all set up and ready to go with this. Um, our deviations, we have that set to one. Our gap, let's set that back up to 1.5. And we're going to need to pre-select our flush and gap gauges and go ahead and start. So in this case, we've, we can go through and see that everything has gone through and we're passing as far as the flush and gap goes. If we zoom back into that same region that we looked at earlier, everything looks nice and even along through there. And we've been able to go through and have this optimize with the constraints there where we're going through and just using about that one particular hinge. Again, the report has been created that would show us the number of gauges and our deviations and, and such along those lines. Now, one of the other things that we can see from this is, this is the adjustments that we need to use, or this is our final result. Because we had used or selected the average point, one of the nice things about this is, if we were to go through and to look at the average point itself, you can see that the deviation in X is showing us to be almost one millimeter in the negative X direction. Since this is where we had done our shift from, this would be a value that you could use for a shim, where you could actually shim the axes of the door or the hinges of the door to get this exact flush and gap measurement for you. So by presetting this up, we can see that there's a quick value that's set for us and we can report that out. Now, if you don't have this in particular um, one location, say for an average point of rotation, and we used the initial setup of, say, the origin, one of the things that we can check to see for a shift from the origin is simply just going to the alignment that we had used and going through and reporting the matrix from there. So if I report the alignment, and we go back to the report editor, you can see that we would actually have an X, Y, and Z location or movement from the initial origin as well as the original alignment. So we're getting a lot more feedback from this um, that we can use to help us as far as manufacturing everything for the future. So with that, we've seen in these two examples that the flush and gap gauges and polyworks can be more than just a simple measurement that gives us a single measurement result. It can be used to optimize the best results of an assembly of components to one another. This is one of the, the terms that you've heard us use, which was point cloud engineering. So with that, what I'm going to do is actually turn this back over to Amanda and see if we have any questions. Thank you, Todd. Yes, we do have a few questions popping up here. Uh, can this be used if no CAD models are available? Uh, as the question is, can this be, uh, can the optimized flush and gap be used if we don't have a CAD model or a reference? Um, yes, we sure can. Uh, if I go back to the previous example here, um, one of the things that when we're going through and looking at this, I did have the CAD model under here for the flush and gap. If I didn't, when I went through and had created this, it would take me a little bit longer to create each of the individual ones. Maybe what I would need to do is create a polyline that would surround that. However, um, we always need a nominal value because remember, we're looking to minimize the deviation. So if that's the case, then if we only have non or measured values, it's as simple as just coming back in and just manually placing in a value for that particular flush or gap gauge. So you can see if with, with geometry controls, I can come in and override those values and just use those. 
So yes, we can do that with just uh, data objects. Hey, thank you, Todd. Another question here. Is it possible to optimize only one of the measurements, either the flush or the gap? Oh, yeah, we sure can. Um, it, that's probably not very clear when we're looking at the optimized flush and gap. You'll see that there's no actually controls in here to say use just flush or just the gap. Some instances you may not be worried about um, using, making sure that the top surface is flush to the outside. So we may only be concerned about just using the, the gap to optimize that. Um, those controls actually are in the properties of the flush and gap gauges. So if I pre-select all of these and just right click and say properties, um, you'll see a tab called alignment. And in there, this is where we can just go through and turn off and on the flush and gap as parameters for it to be used during the optimization. There's also another control that you can give this more weight if you wanted. So maybe what I'm more concerned about is uh, I want the flush to be used a little bit more than the gap. We can go through and actually set those up as well. Um, you can also go through one of the things with that along the same lines with that is let's say you go through and we do an optimize of just the gap and then later we realize, you know what, it's not flush, we can come back in and uncheck one and have two alignments where we've gone through and just done an optimized alignment of, let's say, just the gap, and then one where it's just looking at it being flushed. So the answer, that's a long, that's a long answer, but yes, we can do that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Todd. And that's all the time that we have for today. This webinar has been recorded and it will be available on the Inofmetric software website. Navigate to the support section. It will also be available on the Inofmetric software channel on YouTube. A reminder that we hope to see you at the Followers Conference USA 2018 in Novi, Michigan on April 4th and 5th. The two-day event will be filled with Followers 2018 launch presentation, step-by-step -step technical workshops, follower success stories by experienced users, and more. For all the details, visit our website at www.agnofmetric.com. We're taking a short break, but webinars will be back on May 10th, 2018. Thank you for joining us this morning. See you next time. Bye-bye.